I have decided to do a recording on introversion because I'm noticing that there are a lot of misconceptions about introverts. First, I will ask you a few questions. Does being around too many people drain your energy? Do you prefer being in small groups of people rather than in larger groups? Do people think you are quiet and may find it difficult to know you? Are you self-aware? Do you enjoy solitude and find it recharges you? If you've answered yes to most or all of these questions, then chances are you are an introvert. The terms introversion and extroversion came about through the work of Carl Jung. It is a personality trait. According to many theories of personality, everyone has some degree of both introversion and extroversion. However, you may tend to lean one way or the other. Dr. Susan Krauss Whitbourne from an article she wrote in Psychology Today said, It can be difficult to admit to yourself that you may be an introvert. When we think of people as being introverted, we often wrongly assume that they are people who don't like other people. However, as Suzanne Keynes, who effectively showed the world in her book, Quiet, the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking, introverts can be warm, interested in others, and powerful in their own right. Yet the stigma many still attach to being an introvert may lead people who have these tendencies to resist, if not deny them within themselves. People tend to project their own insecurities onto others. So if you are uncomfortable with silences, or you feel some anxiety around someone not being chatty enough or actively involved with others all the time, the chances are it comes from your own insecurities of staying in silence or possibly not being surrounded by many people. I would ask you, why do you feel the need to be around a lot of people? What does it do for you? Is it acceptable to see someone who likes to be alone? An introvert will prefer being their own boss or working alone, having a close circle of friends, introspective and curious. Introverts can be leaders contrary to assumptions that they can't step up to the plate. They lead differently to an extrovert. They will prefer to draw potential out of the group and they will provide guidance if the group leads itself. So let's look at some common traits in more depth of being introverted so we can understand this trait better and allow introverted people to be who they want to be because by allowing people to be themselves can we create a better environment for all. So number one, being around groups of people is draining for an introvert. An introvert doesn't seek out interaction or social engagements. They will often feel drained if left in big groups of people and too much going on. The way they like to recharge is by spending time alone in a quiet place, not just for one hour, but for an extended amount of time. It doesn't mean introverts are unsociable. They expend energy socialising while extroverts will thrive and gain energy socialising. Asking an introvert to stay in a big group of people for a long time is like asking someone who doesn't like running to run a marathon. Asking an extrovert to be alone for a long time has the same effect as the above. Number two, introverts like solitude. There is a difference between loneliness and solitude. Loneliness is a negative state marked by isolation, whereas solitude is a state of being alone without feeling the loneliness. It is recharging rather than depleting. So an introvert's idea of a good time is simply picking up a good book and reading in a quiet space, spending a day enjoying hobbies and interests, a walking nature, or watching their favourite TV series. It doesn't mean that an introvert wants to be alone all the time. Many introverts will enjoy the company of others. It is just that they will need to recharge after a big party. Number three, introverts prefer small groups of people. Introverts enjoy the company of small groups of people who they know well because they are introspective people and prefer deeper connections with others rather than superficial relationships. 
Too much socialising will give them an introvert hangover, which will leave them fatigued and or irritated. Number four, they are often mistaken to be shy. Because of their introverted nature, they are often mistaken to be shy. When we are shy, we have fear of other people or other social situations. Introverts simply do not like to interact with people all the time. The French philosopher and playwright once said, Hell is other people at breakfast. Number five. Finally, introverts are accused of zoning out a lot. If a situation feels too chaotic, the introvert will zone out as a way to protect their energy expenditure. To others, they seem unfocused. So things to avoid saying to an introvert. What's the matter? You must be lonely. Don't you feel lonely? You are going to be all on your own. Are you sure you don't want to come with us? I don't understand why you shut yourself away rather than coming out with us. It will do you so much good to be out and socialise. Are you shy? Psychiatrist Ian McGilchrist said we lived in a left brain society versus a right brain. So the left brain characteristics are analytical, logical, detail and fact oriented, numerical, likely to think in words, I would say the doing brain. Right brain people are said to be more creative, free thinking, able to see the big picture, intuitive, likely to visualize more than think in words, I would say the being brain. Both parts are equally important when it comes to relationship. The left brain is detrimental to the right brain person because of its opposite nature. So if our society is left brain driven, then us with the right brain dominance can suffer if we are not aware of our true nature being normal for us. So it is about learning to embrace who we are as introverts and understanding that we are not different or unworthy of love if we prefer spending time alone with a good book. All traits are valuable. An introvert may need an extrovert to organize the party. The extrovert may be able to count on an introvert's loyalty. So I hope this little podcast would have helped you understand the nature of the introvert a bit better. And hopefully if you have a friend who's an introvert and you are an extrovert, hopefully this will help you understand the nature of uh, being an introvert and um, that may help in your relationship and the opposite is just as true.